Hey, hi, welcome back again. It's me, your sex positive bestie. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and I help people with vulvas have hotter sex and definitely sex that includes orgasms because there is an orgasm gap and it needs to be closed. It's my belief that no matter how good the sex is that you're having, everyone can be having better sex. And I'm gonna share with you four of my favorite hacks for doing just that. And all of these tips are really simple to implement, but will have a very powerful impact on the quality of sex you're having. So let's get into it. One of the biggest lies that we get told when it comes to sex is the heteronormative model is the gold standard of sex. And what I mean is penis in vagina sex. This is what we learn sex looks like in sex ed. And it's also what we learn sex looks like in mainstream porn. But the reality is this is one of the least effective ways to get someone with a vulva to orgasm. Research shows roughly two thirds of people with vulvas require or prefer clitoral stimulation in order to reach the big O. It's not particularly surprising then that when you look at the statistics around sexuality and orgasm, it's lesbians who are giving women the most orgasms and straight men who are giving women the least orgasms. And obviously that's because when you have a penis, you tend to default to penis in vagina sex. But most lesbians don't have penises and so we are relying on our fingers and our tongues and on toys in order to get our partners off. And the clitoris definitely plays a starring role in that. Autostraddle did a survey of over 15,000 lesbians a few years ago on their preferred sexual practices. Penetrative sex did not even make the top five and all of the top five involved some form of concentrated clitoral stimulation. And this definitely isn't to say that you need to be a lesbian to have better sex. In fact, this should bring some relief to people who have sex with people who have penises because it means that you don't have to have that pressure of having a rock hard penis in order for sex to happen. A lot of people with penises can't maintain a directions throughout all of sex and then that can put a huge amount of pressure on them but if you know that you can get your partner off with your fingers tongue or a toy then you don't have that same amount of pressure and if you're a straight woman you can communicate to your partner that clitoral stimulation is what you would prefer thereby taking the pressure off them to perform and maintain an erection. Now, in terms of the most effective way to stimulate the clitoris to orgasm, my top two faves would definitely be fingers and tongue. Fingering is honestly a lost art among straight couples. And that's also because we've been misled to see fingering as an act of foreplay rather than something that can be the main event. Because you can absolutely get your partner all the way to orgasm with your fingers alone. The mistake that most people tend to make when it comes to clitoral stimulation is treating the clitoris like it's a DJ booth. Please, please, for the love of all people with vulvas, we beg of you, do not do this. The clitoris is a huge bundle of nerve endings. It has more nerve endings in it than the head of the penis. Researchers have estimated there is roughly 10,000 nerve endings in there, which means it can be a source of incredible pleasure, but it's also incredibly sensitive, which means it can easily become irritated. So things like flicking and rubbing with a lot of pressure, which are things that we see in porn, are actually things you should be avoiding. The reason that we see those a lot in porn is because they're much more visual and porn is a visual medium. The best way to stimulate a clitoris doesn't look particularly visual because it's using a very gentle, repetitious touch. I recommend using two fingers and just focusing on the top pads of your fingertips and gently circling around and literally repeat that motion. The circling motion is going to allow you to hit more of the nerve endings and draw blood into the clitoris, which is really important for orgasm to be able to happen. And then when it comes to oral, I cannot go past the ice cream lick. I've spoken about this in videos before, but if you're new here, the ice cream lick is essentially exactly what it sounds like. You are licking the clitoris as if you are licking an ice cream. And most of us tend to lick ice creams with a flat, relaxed tongue. The reason flat, relaxed tongues are really good 
for clitorises is because they're not applying too much pressure and the pressure that is being used is evenly dispersed, which again means you are hitting more of those nerve endings. Because sex education doesn't really teach us about what pleasure looks like for people with vulvas at all, a lot of us end up turning to porn for answers. And the problem is because porn is a form of entertainment, it's not actually showing a realistic depiction of what most people with vulvas need to get off. When we want to be entertained, we need to be mentally and visually stimulated, which is why when you're watching porn, there's lots of positions going on and things are being changed up very frequently. But in reality, most people with vulvas actually require repetition to reach climax. There's truly nothing worse than having a partner find the right spot and bring you close to climax and right before you're about to come, they switch things up. Each time you switch things up, you're essentially going back to square one. You're not just going back a little bit, you're basically going back to the start. The clitoris is incredibly sensitive. So it's not an area where you wanna be trying out lots of different things. So whether you're using a toy, your tongue or your fingers, once you find that particular technique that your partner likes, you wanna stick to it. You wouldn't find a great brownie recipe and then one day randomly decide to just throw in some tomato sauce or some fish flakes. And likewise, if your partner is making all of the right sounds, they're grabbing for the bed sheets, they're arching their back, they're really showing signs of pleasure, the last thing that you want to do is change what you're doing. You want to stick to the exact thing that is producing all of those positive signs from your partner that is showing you they are getting closer to orgasm. One of the best ways to effectively target the G-spot is with your fingers because they allow for a lot more precision. You have a lot more dexterity in your fingers than you do in a penis or even in a dildo or a toy. The best method for hitting the G-spot really precisely and powerfully every time is using the hook. And that involves getting your two fingers and curling them all the way around like a hook, like this. You're essentially making an upside down U shape. You should also be able to quite easily feel the G spot because it does feel different to the rest of the vagina. It's roughly an inch to an inch and a half inside on the front wall of the vagina and it tends to feel a bit more soft and squidgy. And what you want to do when you hook your fingers around is find essentially what is going to feel like a ledge that you're going to push down on. And this particular position is going to allow you to apply quite a lot of pressure to that ledge, which is really effective for stimulating the G spot and also also for squirting if your partner is able to squirt. Unlike the clitoris, the G-spot can actually take a lot more pressure, which for most people with vulvas is going to be preferred. And that's because what you are trying to hit when you're pressing down on that ledge is actually deeper inside. It is the clitoral roots. The head of the clitoris is that little pea-sized bump that you can see on the outside of the vulva sitting just above the urethra. And we used to think this was the entire clitoris up until about 20 years ago when an Australian urologist discovered through micro dissection of cadavers that actually the clitoris has roots which run deep down into the vagina and butt up against the front wall of the vagina. And the bottom of those roots, which are kind of bulbs, sit against the G-spot. So when you are pressing down on the G-spot, you are also stimulating those kind of bulbs at the bottom of the clitoral roots. This also means that if you can stimulate the clitoris at the same time as you are doing the hook method, you're going to produce a really powerful organ orgasm for the person with the vulva because they're going to be having their clitoris hit from both ends. My favorite way to do this is to have the person with a vulva lay down on their back and open their legs and then you are going to essentially put your head between their legs and rest your chest on a pillow so you can raise yourself up a little bit and then put your arm underneath your chest and that pillow is also going to stop you from getting dead arm because it is genuinely a thing that happens speaking from experience. And then you can do the hook from that position while also having your tongue on the clitoris and doing the ice cream lick. I will say though, as tempting as it can be to just bury your whole face in there, make sure that you do keep one nostril free. Otherwise you are going to die drowned in the pussy, which I mean, now that I think of it, there are worse ways to go. So back in the sixties, there were some researchers that did some really cutting edge studies on sex. They actually got humans in labs and got them to have sex and hooked them up to machines and studied them and surveyed them afterwards to try to work out more about how pleasure actually works, particularly for people with vulvas. And what they discovered during these studies was that one of the best ways to get someone 
with a vulva, extremely lubricated and extremely aroused, two things which are super important for getting to orgasm are by using a technique which they coined sensate focus. And sensate focus is really just a form of teasing. Teasing is something that tends to get really neglected in sex between straight couples because it's very penetration focused and often, particularly if you've been with your partner for a long time, you can really skip out the foreplay and just move straight into penetration so there isn't time for that anticipation to build. And research shows that people with vulvas in particular need to build anticipation and we need time to relax in order to get aroused enough to make orgasm a possibility. Specifically, what they found is the most impactful way to tease someone with a vulva is to avoid touching the vulva altogether as well as the breast. And these are because they're the two most kind of sexual areas of the body. So we're anticipating having them touched. So if you hold off touching them, it's going to create more excitement and even more of a desire to have those areas touched. Simply, literally circling around the breast with either your hands, your fingers, you could do it with an ice cube, with a feather, with your tongue. I mean, the possibilities are really endless. That is going to create intense arousal and desire. Hey, it's Editing Nadia here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. But before you go, I want to share some very exciting news, and that is that I am launching a program where I'm going to work with you one-on-one -on -one to teach you how to have the best sex of your life. Now, the program is launching soon, and I am only going to be offering limited spaces. So if you're interested, you can hit the link below the video to join the waitlist. And if you join the waitlist, then I will let you know when it goes live. Hope to see some of you there, and I will see you all in the next video. Mwah.